السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We commence by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator, nourisher, cherisher, sustainer, provider, protector, curer, one who is in absolute control of every single aspect of existence. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah bless them all and may we all be blessed. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, we start with a short prayer. A prayer for those who have been affected by the missing aircraft that is within our hearts and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a miracle in that regard. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a miracle and to open the doors of goodness to return to us our loved ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. My brothers and sisters, when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, yes, he rose in the midst of the Arabs, but the deen and the faith and the religion, from its very outset, it was, very, it was made very clear that it was not only for the Arabs. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا So he was sent to all people. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him a point of mercy for all the worlds, for all the nations, for all the peoples. And we have not sent you except as a point of mercy for the alameen. Alameen meaning the worlds, all the nations, the different types of people, the different races and so on. So this is the message of Islam. It is universal. It is not only for the Arabs, nor is it only for a specific race. And it is a test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the first place to have created us within a specific race. We heard the verses a few moments ago of Surah al hujurat these are powerful verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains the reason why He has made different nations and peoples. The term is in the plural. He says, Ya Your forefather is one. Don't forget you are from Adam and Eve. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon them. Don't forget that the source and the root is one. You are from Adam and Adam is from soil. He was created from dust. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not forget that you are from the single male and female. وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ in order that you may know one another, you may recognize one another. There are different complexions that we have. There are different races that we belong to. There are different continents we come from. This has not been our choice. Nobody can be blamed for where he or she was born. It was the choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a test for us and a test for others regarding the way they treat us. So it is a test from every angle, because if I was born, for example, in a specific place, or I, my complexion is of a specific tint, for example, it is a test for me to accept the decree of Allah, and it is a test for the others, 
to acknowledge me as a human being equal to them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand. And I will give you an example in a few moments from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The most powerful example that we could ever give is that within the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah says, this was in order for you to know one another. For in order for you to recognize one another. And we've always said, imagine, if everyone looked alike, life would be boring. If everyone looked the same, it would be so boring, subhanallah. But Allah has created different shapes and sizes, different colors, different nationalities, so much so that every part of the world has a different accent. Amazing. Some people are so intrigued by a specific accent. They are attracted to it in a way that subhanallah, if they were to get married, they would tell their wives, you know what, you can keep on talking, I won't get tired. Allahu Akbar. Normally people would say, keep quiet. But so Allah has created difference for you to appreciate that difference. It's an appreciation. Something that you would really look towards and say, MashaAllah, I don't have this. Look at how amazing it is. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why we say, remember, nobody has been created ugly by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is an insult to Allah. There will always be someone who appreciates you and I. There will always be people who appreciate where we come from and who we are and what we stand for. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we stand for that which is upright. So my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then cast the verse. By making it clear that the merit belongs to a specific category of people. On my last few moments ago we said everyone is equal. How can the merit belong to a specific category? Well your maker and mine is saying Inna akramakum inda Allahi atkakum inna Allah alimun khabir Indeed the best from amongst you, the most honored, the most noble from amongst you, is he or she who is closest to his maker. That's what Allah is saying. Atqaqum, the one who is most conscious of his maker, the one who fears Allah, the one who has developed a link with his or her maker. Which means Allah is declaring to us that your judgment shall be singular between you and I. That's what Allah is saying. I will judge you based on who you are. And this is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, In Allah ta'ala la yanburu ila suwarikum wa la ila ajsamikum wa lakin yanburu ila kulubikum wa a'malikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never look at your appearance or your body, your tint, your color, your race. That is not looked at by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not a point of judgment by Allah for you. He's not going to say, okay, you are darker, stand on this side. You are fairer in complexion, stand on the other side. You are perhaps from this part of the world, so stand here. You are from the other part, so stand this side. Nothing of that nature. The hadith says, but he will look at your deeds and your heart. If your heart is pure and it is good, your entire body will be pure and good. And if your entire body is pure and good, you will be a person closer to Allah, even if you happen to be living in the jungle of Africa, where nobody knows about you, and perhaps you are just surviving on subsistence farming. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So to get closeness to Allah, you don't need the internet. To get closeness to Allah, you don't need technology. You do not need to be living in a technologically advanced country. No, those are all gifts of Allah for us. We can use them, yes indeed, but it does not necessarily mean that those who don't have it will not be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who own nothing in this world, but in the eyes of Allah, they are the closest. This is why Allah says, Inna Allah alimun khabir. It is Allah who is all knowing, and He is the one who has complete knowledge. He knows absolutely everything. He is the owner of knowledge, and He is the knower of everything. Because sometimes, people can appear to be very different from who they really are. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us peace and goodness. So, from this, let's dive straight into a hadith of Abu Dhar al-Dhifari radiallahu anhu. 
where this man was a great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Great companion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he once had a little altercation with a slave. A slave whose mother was from Africa. A slave whose mother was a dark-skinned woman. And this young man was a slave. And Abu Dhar al-Bifari, radiallahu anhu, being one of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was highly respected and regarded, in the dispute he said one sentence, just one little sentence, as they were talking to each other, or we can use the term arguing with one another, he says, Yabna Sauda, O son of a black woman, A'udhu Billah. Imagine, O son of a black woman, that was what he said. And the slave, slave, when I say slave, subhanAllah, a person who is not only working, but at that particular time, although when Islam had come, Islam slowly but surely freed the slaves through various means. One of them is or was. When a person committed a sin in order to be forgiven, if they had any slaves, they had to free the slaves. Then they would achieve forgiveness. So this is one of the ways of abolishment of slavery by Islam. If a person committed a sin and they had a slave, that would be the first way of achieving forgiveness is to free the slave. Subhanallah, amazing, that is Islam. So what happened is, this man went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and just complained. He said, you know, Abu Dhar al-Difari, Rabbi Allah anhu, Abu Dhar, your companion, he uttered a word to me which was hurtful. He told me, O oh son of a black woman, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, immediately when he saw Abu Dhar al Bifari, radiallahu anhu, he said, O oh Abu Dhar, is it true you had a little altercation with this man? So and so? He said, yes. Is it true that you cursed his mother or you called him by a derogatory term connected to his mother? The Prophet ﷺ did not repeat the statement, remember this, because it was so serious. He did not say, did you say he was the son of a black woman? He did not say that. He said, did you use a derogatory term connected to his mother? So Abu Dhar al-Dibari says, oh messenger wasallam, we were in altercation and you know how people talk when they talk to each other in that condition. The Prophet says, Ya Abu Dhar, inna ka murun fi ka jahiliya. Inna ka murun fi ka jahiliya. Oh Abu Dhar, you are a man who still has in him some ignorance, remnants of the period of ignorance. And this was a shock. Because a man who had accepted the deen a while back, he was a Muslim from a time. He had a lot of knowledge. People looked up to him. And the Prophet ﷺ tells him, You are a man who has in you some remnants of ignorance. The period of ignorance. That period before Islam, when people used to use derogatory terms to refer to their fathers and mothers of one another. That is not befitting a Muslim. You are not allowed at all. It is a major, major, major sin to express the race of a person in a derogatory manner. And this is why Muslim or non-Muslim, you are not allowed to tamper with the race of an individual in a way that is derogatory. You may want to make mention of a race in a respectful way, but you are never allowed to do so jokingly or even in a derogatory way. Do you know that sometimes we joke, may Allah forgive us all, I may have made the mistake too, because as we grow up, environment is so powerful that you don't realize what you say and what you do as you grow up. And later on, when you grow up a little bit older, you become conscious of your statements. Sometimes as we're growing up, we joke about a different race. May Allah forgive me and forgive all of us. May He make us conscious about this. It is prohibited even if you are joking. In Islam, the difference is joking has its limits. Just like freedom of speech in Islam has its limits. Subhanallah. You cannot use the term freedom of speech to joke about people in a hurtful manner, in a way that is derogatory, something they can do nothing about. I, recently I watched a clip of someone who actually said that as I grew up so dark in Africa, every day it was my prayer that, oh God, Make me lighter than I am. 
Imagine what type of prayers the people have made go to show that they were made to feel inferior because people kept on saying this one is dark, and this one is light, and this one is this. In Islam that is not allowed, not at all. Absolutely prohibited. And this is why Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu he was one of the darkest of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in complexion. But do you know what happened? When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned from Mi'raj, he had gone up to the seven heavens. When he came down, he said, Ya Bilal, O Bilal, Sami'tu kashkashata Bilal in Jannah. He said, I heard your footsteps in paradise. I heard your footsteps in paradise, O Bilal. Imagine the status of that man. He was a slave before of one of the Qurayshites. One of the people of Quraysh, Umayyah bin Khalaf. And he was punished because he accepted Islam. But the Prophet ﷺ did not say, this man is from Africa, Islam is not for him. Not for him. Never. So much so that when the Muslims were in need and they were sent to Abyssinia, there was a black king, Najashi, the king of Abyssinia, who was a just man, not only praised by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but even mentioned in the Quran. Mentioned in the Quran. Luqman the wise, it is reported that he was a man from Sudan. Dark man. Subhanallah. Yet his wisdom is mentioned in the Quran. Did you ever know that? We wouldn't have known it because in Islam that is not important. The color you are is absolutely irrelevant. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Like I said, sometimes we grow up in society believing that we are better. There are sicknesses in society that sometimes parents look at their own children. Those who are a little bit darker in complexion are treated unfairly. Just because they are slightly darker. I have had so many people complain to me, young children as they're growing up, my mother doesn't like me, she favors my siblings, just because I am literally the black sheep, I am darker in complexion than the rest. How dare you, my beloved mother, we need to be Muslimin, those who surrender to Allah. We will never do that. That is your amana, that is your test, that is your beautiful beloved child. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. No. We should never become amongst those who think fair in complexion is beautiful. Wow. And those who are not, are not. Some of the most beautiful people are dark in complexion. Yet Allah has created within them a certain beauty. And I am always the one who says, do you know? People comment and they say, oh this person has a lot of noor on his face or her face. Sometimes they themselves do not have the noor to recognize that in actual fact it's only the fair complexion. It's got nothing to do with the light given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes the darkest of people have the most of noor on their faces. But it takes one to know one. So it's only when you have that level of spirituality that you will be able to recognize the spirituality and the religiousness in another. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. It's our weakness. And the love of these looks that we have within us that sometimes makes us look at others in a derogatory manner. Learn to respect yourself. And learn to believe in Allah correctly. If we pause for a moment and we take a look, we will find that there are certain things that are distributed by Allah that we have had nothing to do with. And for someone to compete with Allah in that regard, is obviously dangerous for their belief in Allah. For example, if a person has been given wealth by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wealth is in the hands of Allah. Some people work hard and achieve very little. Some people, they work very little and achieve a lot. That is in the hands of Allah. Sustenance is in the hands of Allah. Sometimes Allah gives people acceptance with small work. And sometimes others are working so hard and they don't have as much. This is all the gift of Allah. So Allah says, أَمْ يَحْسُدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ الله أكبر فقد آتينا آل إبراهيم الكتاب والحكمة 
of what Allah has blessed one over the other in terms of the blessing, in terms of the gift of Allah. When Allah has gifted you with something, you become jealous of someone else who has a different gift or a better gift, something you might term a little bit better, you become jealous. Do you know what jealousy is? It eats away your good deeds in the same way that a fire would eat away at a log. The reason is, you are competing with Allah. Allah chose to give you something, and Allah chose to give me something. If you become jealous, it is as though you are saying, Oh Allah, I am unhappy with what you have decided. Well, who are you? Allahu Akbar. I am unhappy with what you have decided. How could this man have been given such a top position or post when I am a person who doesn't have it and I work harder? That is jealousy. And all this, the root of it is from the devil. The devil from the very beginning was jealous of our own species, the species of man. Do you know what he said? Iblis. Alayhi la'natullah. Do you know what he said? He says, أَنَا خَيْرٌ مِّنْهُ فَلَقْتَنِي مِنْ نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِنْ طِينٍ I am better than Adam. You have made me from fire and made him from soil. Now the same statement some of us utter, but in a different way. We say, I am better than him. He comes from China and I come from Malaysia. For example, it's just an example. I gave it because I heard the brother saying it a few minutes ago. But the same would apply if we say, I am better than him because I come from America and he comes from Africa. No. Wallahi, when we see Jannah, and I always think to myself, if we had a list of nationalities of people who will be in paradise, we will be shocked. We will be surprised. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease and goodness. So it's amazing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us already what the devil did and what he said. Why then do we repeat the same statement in a slightly different way when we think we are better? That was the original crime of Iblis. It led him to do so much in terms of harm against mankind. And his entire existence is now spent trying to lead mankind astray in order to try and gain closeness to Allah. Billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us closeness to him in the true sense. So Abu Dhar al Ghitari was admonished by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That statement was so profound and so deep when he used to think about it and he made mention of this later on in his life. When he grew much older, he shifted to a place known as Al-Rabada and when he went there, he made mention of it to a few people. Do you know what? The statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has impacted on me so much. Whenever I see a person of a different race, I make sure that I go out of my way to be good to them, to be kind to them, to give them that importance, to be just with them. And when I see a, a slave, whether belonging to someone else, or to myself, or a worker who is working, I always go out of my way to be extra kind to them, because I heard the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the same occasion that he told me that, O oh, Abu Dhar, you have in you, some remnants of the period of ignorance. He said, إِخْوَانُكُمْ خَوَلُكُمْ جَعَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَحْتَ أَيْدِيكُمْ فَمَنْ كَانَ أَخُوهُ تَحْتَ يَدِهِ فَلْيُطْعِمْهُ مِمَّا يَأْكُلْ وَلْيُلْبِسْهُ مِمَّا يَلْبَسْ وَلَا تُكَلِّفُوهُمْ مَا يُغْلِبُهُمْ فَإِنْ كَلَّفْتُمُوهُمْ فَأَعِينُوهُمْ the Prophet says, These people who work for you, these people who serve you, they are your brothers. Pause for a moment. If Allah wanted it, it could have been the other way around. Today someone is serving you at home. Today someone is helping you or they are under your employment. Remember, if Allah wanted it, it could have been the other way around. And if He wants, it can be the other way around very quickly, very soon. And if Allah wants, it can be the other way around with your children and their children. We have seen it happening, where a man who was employed by another man, while well, the first man's children later on went to seek job at the second man's children. It has happened. This is Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, understand this. 
And this is why the hadith says, these are your brothers. They are your brothers in humanity at least. Because we know that brotherhood is on different levels. You are a brother in blood. You are a brother higher than that in faith. And you are a brother in humanity who also has right to be fulfilled for those who share humanity with you in order that the earth is not downgraded into a chaotic playing field. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these are your brothers. Allah has placed them temporarily under your guardianship or your authority. That's what it is. جَعَلَهُمُ اللَّهُ تَحْتَ أَيْدِيكُمْ So, whomsoever has his or her brother under his or her authority, he should feed him with food that he eats himself. What this means is, you don't just throw leftovers and say, okay, these are workers, just throw the leftovers in there. No, we have a bad habit sometimes. We will cook the food, beautiful food. The cook that cooked it for us is not allowed to eat from it. How is that? That is not allowed in Islam. Share with them a little bit. Subhanallah, they will cook it even better because they know I'm going to eat it. Subhanallah. So if you want your cook, subhanallah, to become a big chef, all you need to do is say, don't worry, we're all going to eat the food. See the importance they give that food. Subhanallah. That is Islam. Feed them with the same food that you eat. That's what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says. Let's be honest, a lot of us are guilty. A lot of us are guilty of giving leftovers that we ourselves would not eat to those who work for us. I'm not saying it's wrong to give leftovers that are worth eating. To say, look, we're not going to eat this. If you would like it, you may take it. But to throw remains that you've eaten half of, that you would never eat if someone else gave you a half of. And you want to throw it to them just because they are in need, they are desperate, they are working perhaps under your authority, is definitely not the quality of a Muslim. You have in you a portion of the remnants of the period of ignorance. That's what it is. That is what Islam came to abolish. And we have not yet abolished it. And this is why the hadith continues to say, and clothe them with the clothes that you wear. Wow. Subhanallah. That is not easy. Subhanallah. Someone working for you, and the standard of clothing must be similar to yours. Similar to yours? That is a tough one. So let me tell you something. At least give them clothing that is usable after you may have used it. That's not wrong. But don't give them that which has developed holes and cracks and keep on telling them, I only wore this three or four times. It's excellent here. You can take it and wear it. And you know that you patched it up four or five times. And you are a person who's got 45 garments in your closet that you haven't even touched in the last two years. And you want the half of these human beings to be attracted to Islam? Islam preaches equality in the true sense. If only we followed the beautiful deed. The problem is, people meet us as Muslims before they meet the real Islam. So they are distracted from Islam. That's the thing. Had they met Islam before they met the Muslims, they would become better Muslims than myself and yourself. This is why, how many readers do we have who are better Muslims than we who were born Muslims? Why? They've seen the darkness, they know what it's all about. They learned Islam and learned it thoroughly from Revelation. Whereas we were born Muslims, we have not yet studied Revelation. There we are. This is the mistake we've made. And this is why, when we look at people who, are, who have reverted, if we look at them with the wrong eyes, and we do not welcome them into society and accept them as our brothers and sisters, perhaps Allah is rejecting us, not them. Remember this. Perhaps the dirt in our heart needs to be cleaned. The remnants of the period of ignorance that is in our heart needs to be cleaned. We need to be following Islam where they are truly following Islam. They have perhaps struggled face uphill challenges with their own families and now they come and we refuse to embrace them we refuse to embrace them and we are skeptical regarding them that is ignorance may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us reach out to your brothers and sisters imagine here we are talking of those under your authority who are not even Muslim you are not allowed to be racist against those saying that okay these are not Muslims so it's okay no these 
laws govern humanity at large, they are fit to be within the UN Charter and they would probably make a better Charter than we have right now. Subhanallah. They run through, cut through society at large. Every race is equal. It does not mean just because it's a rich nation that we will go to their assistance when they are in trouble. No, even the, the, the poorest of nations in Africa, we would go to their assistance if they were in trouble because we would be applying the same rule of assisting humanity, not only looking at where it is our own benefit. If that's the case, you have no humanity in you. You just have a business mind. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He grant us the understanding of the true deed. This is Islam. So the hadith says, clothe them with clothing that would be fitting for you to wear yourself. Give it to them. Reach out to them. A lot of us, we have so much. And yet those who work for us continue looking and looking. And with their good hearts perhaps, they may be from amongst those who don't really wish because they know this character is never going to give me anything. Whereas if you are Muslim, they would know. Do you see when it comes to zakat, a shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi says that if you are a wealthy person and there are poor people in your own community, it is wrong to give your zakat into another community. Did you hear this? If you are wealthy and in your community there are poor people, to send your zakah off to another community would be wrong because and there is a powerful reason behind it the reason is those who are poor have seen you earning your money they look at it so evenly and pussy him in order to to get their hearts purified in your regard if you have reached out to them with the charity every time they pass your business they will in fact pray for you because they know two and a half percent of that business actually belongs to us Allahu Akbar we are shareholders in there if he does well and he makes 20 million ringgit our two and a half percent is much bigger subhanallah that's the business mind we've given the people they know that we are going to get from this man and from this woman because we know this we are not saying it's wrong to reach out to those who are in more desperate need, but we are saying without that necessity, remember, reach out to those who have watched you earn your money. They know what type of car you drive, what type of a house you live in. You have not yet reached out to them. Why? We ask Allah to grant us the understanding. So, when we reach out to those who work for us in the correct way, we create a beautiful working environment where they are encouraged to work harder. Productivity is increased because they know we are part of one family known as humanity. They are attracted to what the driving force behind our actions is. And that driving force actually is the deed. My link with Allah. That's why Allah says, Inna akramakum inda Allahi akfakum. The most noble from amongst you in the eyes of Allah is the one who has the greatest taqwa, the consciousness of his maker. Like I said, the link you have with Allah is what determines what your status is in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That link can be developed by anyone and everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So my brothers and sisters, Abu Dhar al-Rifari radiallahu anhu once in Rabada, later on in his life, one of the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went by to visit him. And he saw that he had shared a hulla which was made up of two pieces. Hulla meaning like a piece of clothing that was made up of two pieces, the top piece and the bottom piece. And he shared it in a way that he gave one piece to his worker and the other piece he had. So this Sahabi says, why did you do that? It is one piece of clothing as such, divided into two, meaning it's part of the same what we would term suits today, and you've given part to him and part to yourself. He says, I will never forget the admonition of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am here, I am so old, so many years later, but I want to say that I have learned a lesson of my life. Now the question I have for myself, one statement by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to Abu Dhar, he remembered it up to the point of death. We hear the statement time and again, we read the Quran so much, we know it's prohibited, has it affected us? 
Have we changed anything in the way we live? No. Sometimes not. So I call on yourselves and myself today to change the way we look at different races and colors. To change the way we look at those who might be working for us solely because they are a different nationality, from a different part of the globe, from a different tribe that does not make them bad. It does not make them any lower than us. If Allah wants a generation down the table can turn or even sooner. So remember, change your attitude towards the people and you will create a globe by the will of Allah according to the manner that Allah had intended and wanted. According to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, this is a serious topic. When we talk of race and color, sometimes we chase people away from the deen because of the, the attitude we have, solely because they belong to a different nationality. And this is a crisis, not just in this country perhaps, but all over the world, including in the Arab nations, including in some of the nations where Islam arrived very early. You find that sometimes they feel that this is just a franchise for us. It is patented for me. It is a copyright. It's ours. No, you have to share it. If you do not share it, you have in you part of the portion of ignorance, the period of ignorance. And you know that period of ignorance? That is where they used to enslave anyone who came from somewhere else and they did not know who they were. Take a look at Suhaib al-Rumi and the others. He was a Roman man. They enslaved him. Why? Because he came in. Subhanallah. You, they look at a man, we don't know who this is. Well, take him as a slave. That was the attitude. That's what the Prophet wasallam abolished by the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will not enslave. They are free men and free women. Subhanallah. We treat each other just as we would like to be treated. And this is why the Prophet wasallam says, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you are true believers until you love for your brethren what you love for yourself. He didn't say your own race. The Muslims from amongst your race. Those are not the words that I use. These are your brothers. You love for them what you love for yourself. Treat others as you would like to be treated. Today, Muslimin are looked at in some parts of the world as hooligans and barbaric. Partly because some of them belong to a hooligan type of thinking. And they have left Islam. The only thing remaining is the word Muslim. But do they follow the deen? The answer is no. Take a look at people going around on a global level and promoting chaos in the name of Islam. Where is Islam? And this chaos, how do the two come together? No, sometimes it's just a political feud that they have and they use the name of the religion in order to gain a little bit of popularity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take God. Really, the disservice to Islam today is actually done by those who say they follow Islam when they are not following Islam. And this is why I always like to ask people, my brother, you're a Muslim, my sister, you're a Muslim. How much of Islam do you actually know? They say, I know a lot. So how much of the Qur'an do you actually know? Well, very little of the Qur'an. Well, Islam's roots is the Qur'an. It means you know nothing. What you think you know is actually not Islam. Because the root of Islam is Allah. It is Allah and His word is only one and that is the Qur'an. And from that the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire lifestyle and his statements and dictates which were all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah to grant us an understanding. My brothers and sisters, if you take a look at this lesson that we have, what a powerful lesson. The lesson of Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu. The lesson of the king of Abyssinia. I, I mentioned the verses that are in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of. And this is amazing. It is something so powerful. It is something that we will actually find difficult sometimes to do. Allah says, وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ تَرَى أَعْيُنَهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ 
قوم يقولون ربنا آمنا فاكتبنا مع الشاهدين The scholars of Tafsir make mention of this king of Abyssinia and they say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to the tears that rolled down the cheeks of Abhama and Najashi the negus of Abyssinia Allah says those they are the ones when they heard the Quran being recited you would witness the tears rolling down their cheeks you would witness their eyes being filled with the tears because of the truth that they have recognized and then they say Rabbana Amanna Faktubna Ma'a Shahideen Oh Allah, we have believed so write us from amongst the witnesses those who bore witness the question I have for you and for myself when we hear the verses of the Quran do we cry? do they move us? Do we feel our hair raising? Subhanallah. What do we feel? Do we feel softened? If we do, good news. But that's not just enough. You need to say, Rabbana amanna faktubna ma'a shahideen. Najashi did not only cry when he heard the Quran, but he said, Oh Allah, I believe. So write me from amongst the witnesses. Sometimes we have obstacles. Sometimes we have obstacles on our path that are blocking us from believing in our Maker alone and putting our head down on the ground for our Maker alone. But Allah says, if you call out to me, you will overcome all those obstacles. You need to make an effort and you need to face a few challenges in this world. Not everybody will be happy with your prophet and not everybody will become sad when you suffer a loss. There are people out there who will become happy at your loss. And there are people out there who will become sad when you gain something. So remember that. Your link with Allah will determine what is good and bad. Not whether people are happy with you or not. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with us. So, remember one thing. Spread peace. Spread love. Learn to love one another for the sake of Allah. And I'm always one of those who say, my brothers and sisters, we will never be able to think exactly the same. Never. We will never be able to have 100% synchronization in our thoughts. No. We will always have a few differences. Differences of opinion on certain matters, differences of opinion this and that, perhaps different likes and dislikes and so on and so forth. It does not take us out of the fold of humanity. No, it doesn't. No, the it amongst us, in most cases, no, does it take us out of the fold of being Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to be true Muslim. Remember this. The problem with us today, we have lost basic humanity by pointing fingers at others and claiming that they are upon nothing. We are the ones, that's it. And in the process, we create hatred and division to the degree that there is no even communication between brothers and sisters and people of the same nationality and people of the same race. Sometimes no speech. Why? Just because we have allowed the derogatory qualities of the period of ignorance to come back and overtake us. We don't even have the patience with one another to even discuss matters in a polite, proper, humane manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return to us even the basic qualities of human beings. We've become so selfish that each one of us lives for ourselves. Sometimes we wouldn't even like our own brothers and sisters to receive what we have. Sometimes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. So my brothers and sisters, the way to get closer to Allah is to break down these barriers and to understand what it is that Allah wants from me. Allah wants from me to reach out to humanity at large. Not just my little group of people. Not only my community. Not only those who think exactly like me, no. But I must reach out to humanity at large, such that I can showcase the deen of Allah to those who perhaps are searching for it and they require just a short or a small help, a small, should I say, pushing before they can actually 
embrace the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deen that Allah has chosen for us, my brothers and sisters. Look at how we have come in great numbers, different complexions, different sizes, different nationalities. I know of people who are here from the Philippines, from Australia, from UK, from South Africa, from so many other places, from Australia, mashallah. And yet we love one another solely for the sake of Allah. If you do not feel that love in your heart, there is something wrong. We share the shahada, we share the faith, that is an even more powerful link that we have with one another. If you don't feel it, well there is something wrong. Subhanallah, there is something wrong. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, may He guide us. May He open our doors and may He grant us the knowledge. May He make us from those who do not justify our wrongdoings. Just because we claim that, okay, Allah loves me, now I can do as I please. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, you will be able to feel it through Him making it easy for you to obey Him the way He wants you to do it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. May He open our doors. My brothers and sisters, I've already said a lot. Just to recap, we have made mention of the story of Abu Dhabi al Ghisari, and I want you never to forget it. The reason is, it has in it powerful lessons. If he remembered it right up to the point of his death, and if he acted upon it, surely we who have come generations later should be remembering the same statement, and we should know our failure would lie in going against the instruction of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You want to put up barriers of race and color? You have put up a barrier between you and paradise. Remember that. If Bilal ibn Rabah was found in paradise or he was heard in paradise, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came down and told him, I heard you in paradise. What an honor for the man. What an honor. When the call for the prayer was to be called, they got him with a beautiful voice. And mashallah, he called it in such a way that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam later on informed us all that the most conspicuous on the day of judgment, those who will be looked, recognized from afar, will be those who called out the adhan. The top of the lot, Bilal ibn Rabah, radiallahu anhu. Imagine, when I heard the hadith the first time, I thought of a giraffe. And I thought to myself, subhanallah, you know how you have all the animals, and suddenly you see the giraffe from afar with the trees. You just see this giraffe, subhanallah, right at the top. أَطْوَلُ النَّاسِ أَعْنَاقًا You know, the, the person who has the longest neck, that's what the wording of the hadith is. So you have, the giraffe has the longest neck from amongst the species of animals, according to what we have seen in our lives. But, imagine the conspicuousness of that degree, who would not want it? Well, you call out the adhan. And this is why, give value to those who have called the adhan. In some places, the persons or the people who call out the adhan have the least value. Do you know that? They have the least value. Who's that man? Who has this? Again, we throw our remains to him. A'udhu billah. Again, we throw our leftovers to him. Clothes that are tacky. Should I say torn? We cannot wear. Throw it to him. Why? He's the Muaddin. You don't realize. He is a person who has the reward of every single person who came for the salah as a result of his calling. And you don't even know. Because the reward with Allah is different from the material items of this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May He grant us peace and goodness. May we have learned the lesson today. Remember, never fall into the clutches of the devil. The devil was the one who always said, I am better. What did it make him do? It made him go against the command of Allah and it made him lose his place in paradise. Just because he said, I am better. So remember, we are all equal. Like we always say, Annasu sawasiya ka asnan al People are equal like the teeth of a comb. If you have a comb with teeth that are all of different heights, you won't comb your hair. I hope there are no females who say no words. It might be a new hairstyle. But the truth is, it doesn't. You need to have a comb that the, the teeth of that comb are all in uh, one line. Then you can comb your hair, mashallah, if you have any.
Now the men will be looking at me and saying, what are you talking about? <laughs> Don't worry, I've joined your category, mashallah. That is the explanation of who we are, similar to the comb. If you think you are one above, your, your comb won't work. So remember this, you are not one above. We are all the same. We are all trying to earn closeness to Allah. And you know what's one easy way of earning closeness to Allah? Fulfilling the rights of one another. And reaching out to human beings in such a way that they can see the light. They can see the goodness. And this is why Ali ibn Abi Talib anhu was told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we should be repeating this every day. Wallahi la an yahdi Allahu bika rajulan wahidan khayrun laka min humuin na'a. Wallahi, for Allah to use you to have guided even a single person is better for you than the most valuable of material items of this world. The term used was the red camel. Very valuable at the time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us to spread a good message. And may we be such that we live in Islam in a way that those who are not Muslims can actually see Islam in the true sense within us. They see the contentment we have, the justice that we have, the humane qualities that we have, so high and so lofty. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reached out to so many people. An example just came to my mind now, right now. At the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a lady, again, of a different race, one who worked. She used to sweep the masjid. She used to sweep the masjid, clean the place of worship. So take away the dirt and whatever else there was and make sure it's clean and so on. And she did it for a long time. And one day she passed away. And nobody informed Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But time and again he used to ask about her. How is this woman? How is she? What is she doing? And he, he had been reaching out to her in whatever way. So one day when he asked about her, they said, oh she's passed away. He became so upset. How could you not have told me that she passed away? And do you know what? Normally when we have a janaza, the normal janaza, we are talking here of the case 99% of the time, you have the janaza in front of you and the imam says Allahu Akbar, when the person has passed away, there is a prayer that we engage in, known as janaza, salatul janaza, the imam says Allahu Akbar and they read the prayer. On that instance, against the norm, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the grave of this woman and he decided to read Salatul Janata at the grave after she was buried, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recorded in his hadith, recorded in the books of history. And he was so upset because he said, you did not inform me I would have wanted to attend that particular janaza. In fact, most probably he would have led it. Subhanallah. But the statement being made was, do not feel for a moment that this person is not so important for us to inform Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they passed away. He considered her more important than a lot of the others. And this is why he did for her what he did not do for others. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the value, the treatment. Imagine what type of a message went across to other women who were of a similar standing in terms of worldly life. They must have felt the greatest ever to say the man has honored us. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May we be from amongst those who realize that truly he was sent as a point of mercy to mankind at large, to creation at large. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may He grant us every form of goodness and may He gather us in Jannah the same way He gathered us here today. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nasdaqiruka wa natubu ilayhi. For more lectures, visit slhub.com.